If you're looking for a way to add some fun and interactivity to your e-learning, then you are in the right place because today I'm going to show you how to create interactive video using Adobe Captivate. Hey, it's Jeff with yourlearningcareer.com. So you might be asking yourself, well, what is interactive video? What does that even mean? So basically, you know, of course, usually if you're creating an e-learning course and you want to put some video in, typically, you know, the person gets to that part, they hit play, it plays, they watch it, and then they continue on. With interactive video, this gives your learner the opportunity to actually do things like maybe click a button to skip to a certain point in the video, uh, as an example. Or something else we can do with interactive video is have the video pause at a certain point and put a quiz question up. So those are just a couple of examples of what I mean by interactive video. So it's actually, you know, you, you're giving your learner the opportunity to interact with the video. But enough about what it is, let's get into Captivate and let me show you how to do it. So here I am in Captivate and I'm actually gonna start with the final project because I wanna show you first like how it works uh, and then I'm gonna go and show you how I did it. I'm going to go into preview and the very first thing I need to tell you is when you're working on an interactive video like this and you're gonna go preview, you want to make sure you preview HTML5 in browser. Otherwise, the interactive elements are not going to work. So you'll see the video starts and now it's gonna pause. And that pause is actually built into the continue button that I have here. That's where I asked it to pause the video because I have this caption here. It's saying, where would you like to visit? Click a button on the left to skip to that location. So this is what I'm talking about with making your video interactive. So in this case, this video is, or this uh, project is called a stroll through Hogsmeade. So maybe my person who is watching this, maybe they want to skip right to Hogwarts Castle. Well, that's the cool thing about this interactive video is they can do that. Let's see what happens when I click Hogwarts Castle. Well, look at that. It skips to that part of the video. And then if I wanna go back to, let's say I wanna go back to Owl Roost, I can go there. And I know you don't see any owls, but they're, they're in the building there. <laughs> or I could go back to the three broomsticks. And here we are. And then the other thing with three broomsticks is it has this little bit where it pauses, the video pauses and it gives a little bit of information about the three broomsticks. So that's something you could do. Uh, and then I'll hit continue and it will continue. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is here with the Hogwarts Express Conductor. So if I click on that, there's the conductor. And then here is where I've added a little quiz. So you can see it asks me what platform does the Hogwarts Express leave from in London? And let's see, I've got these answers. I think I'm gonna go with C. And let's see what happens. I hit submit. Oh my goodness, I'm correct. So I can click anywhere. And it continues the video. So those are the little interactive elements that I have built into this particular video. Let me close this. And now I want to show you how those elements were added. How did we get the video to be interactive? All right. So now this version, this, I know this looks exactly the same as what we were just in, but this one, I have not added the necessary elements because I'm going to actually show you how I did it. So basically this is my starting slide. So what I have here is I just have this background. This is just a shape. Um, I have a title here. I inserted my video. I should, let me go ahead and show you how the, the video is inserted. There are a couple different ways that I can add a video. I could go to media and add a video. And when I do that, it's got several options at, at once. Is it an event video? Is it a slide video? For interactive video, it does need to be a slide video. So this is one way I could do it, or I'm gonna cancel this, or I could, they give me this option here, interactive video. Now what I like about this is, it's a simplified interface because it automatically 
knows that it's going to be a slide video, so it doesn't even ask you that. So this is actually a little more straightforward because now all I have to do is say from my computer or from YouTube or from Vimeo. In this case, it's going to be from my computer. And then I just need to tell it the file path. Now, let me show you this real quick. So notice this, this is a video, this is a video from my iPhone. And if I hit open, watch this. It gives me an error. So I just want to let you know that this could happen to you. Um, it really uh, prefers, Captivate, prefers MP4. And so if I go and I'm trying to put in this .mov, it does not like it. It tells me it's incorrect. Um, so I hit OK. And you might be thinking, oh, no, what am I going to do? Well, the good news is that Ado uh, the Captivate comes with an Adobe Media Encoder. And in fact, I have a video where I show you this exact scenario and how you use the encoder. So I'm gonna to link to that here and in the description. So if you wanna check out how to use the media encoder to uh, create an MP4, but um, I already have a version of this video in MP4, it's right here. So I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna hit open. And this time I will not get that dreaded error. All right, so my video comes in no problem. Now I'm gonna go back up to this slide because this is where I kind of had everything already arranged, but I did wanna show you how to insert the video. But you'll see here what I did was, I just resized it. You know, if you click on the video, you got the little squares here. You know, you can drag and resize. You know, I can move it around um, if I want to. So anyway, so you can resize the video and then all I've done here is this, this is just a caption. So to add this, all I did was go here and I did a text caption and that's where I typed in the questions here. Um, I have the rest of these are shapes. So if you go up to shapes, and in this case I did the rounded rectangles and that's all these are. You know, I just placed them wherever I want. And then if you click inside, if I start typing in there, you see that's how I made the labels. So that's all that is. It's just, it's just these shapes. And then I typed in what I wanted to type in. So in this one, it was, you know, three broomsticks, owl roost, etc. right? And then down here, this continue button. Now I mentioned to you that this is what's pausing the video. And that is done over here in properties, okay? So there are a couple things I needed to do with this continue. One, I wanted to use it as a button. So I made sure to check that box there. Then under actions here, I left all this as it was, but up here on the drop down on success, continue. So that's all I did there. And then the other thing is timing and I have display for the rest of the slide. And then I also, and I have appear after zero seconds. So it's right there at the beginning. And then I hit, uh, this checkbox pause after however long. So in this case, it's one and a half seconds. So that is why it pauses. So at this point, let me just do a quick preview to show you where we are right now. So right now it pauses because of my continue button, but look at all of these. If I click on all, any of these, nothing happens because I have not set up my interactivity yet. So let's go look at how to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is create what are called bookmarks. Notice down here at the bottom left, you see how there is a bookmark row? That is where I'm going to set up my bookmarks. And that is how you are able to make it so a person can skip to a certain point in your video. So in this case, I'm gonna create four bookmarks. I'm gonna create one bookmark for each one of these. 
So the first bookmark is going to be for the three broomsticks. So first I'm going to scrub this until the video gets to the three broomsticks. I'm going to go a little bit past where that uh, caption is here on the timeline. Um, so that that's, uh, even though it's showing here when it's, when it's actually playing, it will not be there. All right. So now what I want to do is create a bookmark here. So notice the bookmark row and notice there's this little plus sign that's for insert bookmark. So if I insert the bookmark or if I click this, it's going to say bookmark eight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it to three broomsticks and then I'm going to hit the check mark and there is my bookmark. So now I'm going to go to my next, whatever my next, uh, thing is. In this case, it's the owl roost. So I'm going to keep going until I get to that. So there's that. And once again, I'll hit the plus and I'll rename this owl roost. And then I'll do that two more times for Hogwarts Express Conductor and Hogwarts Castle. Okay. So there's the castle. That's my last bookmark. So now I've got my four bookmarks. Okay. So now the next thing I need to do is assign these bookmarks to each one of these. But first I need to make sure that each one of these is a button. So when I first created them, I just added them as a shape. So now I actually have to make sure that they are buttons. So let me go over here to properties. And I'm going to click the checkbox for use as button. And I'm going to do that for all four of these. And then my next step is to go to actions and under on success, I'm going to click on jump to bookmark. So there's jump to bookmark. And then it asks me which bookmark. And in this case, three broomsticks, that's the first one. I'm going to leave that like that. And then I'm going to leave everything else the same. And now I'll go to my next button and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change. Um, I already have it as a button. So I'm going to just change this jump to bookmark. This time it's going to be owl roost. So now let's do a quick preview and make sure it is working the way we are expecting. All right, it stopped. Let's see how it goes. Three broomsticks. broomsticks. Yep, there it is. Owl roost. Yep, there it is. Conductor. There he is. And the castle. Perfect. And if I want to go back, I can go back to the three broomsticks. So that is excellent. That is working. So that is one type of interactivity that you can add. Now let's look at another way to add interactivity. And that's with, let's say we want to add a quiz question that pops up when they get to this part of the video, the Hogwarts Express conductor. For that, I'm going to use something called overlays. And as you can see, there is an overlay row here on the timeline. So let's see how we're going to use that. So what I'm going to do actually first, I'm going to go up here and add a new slide and I'm going to add a knowledge check slide. And for the knowledge check, I'm going to make this a multiple choice and I'm going to leave that at one. I'm just adding the one question and I'll hit okay. And now I just need to update this slide. So it asks the question I want. I'll update the answers. And uh, actually, let me do this because uh, it only brought in two answer choices. So let's say I want to add a couple more. I'm going to go over here to the quiz tab. And here where it says answers to, I'm just going to change that to, let's say, four. And enter and see how it automatically adds those answer choices for me. So now I will update my question here. What platform does the Hogwarts Express go to in London? So the choices are going to be eight, nine, nine and three quarters or 10. Okay. And then I do need to, I need to indicate which one is correct. And in this case it is 
C, nine and three quarters. And then anything else I wanna update, you know, I can update the color of the bar. I can, maybe I'll get rid of this. I don't, maybe I don't need this to say multiple choice. So I'll delete that. Maybe I'll move this up a little. Um, but anyway, you can play around with the formatting. Right now, I'm just gonna leave this how it is because we're the main thing I wanna show you here is how to use the overlays. So now that we have this slide created, I'm gonna go back to this slide. I'm going to assign where I want that slide to pop up. So I'm going to have this um, this question appear after we see the Hogwarts Express conductor because the question is related to the Hogwarts Express. So let me go over to that part in the video. Okay, so there he is. He's showing up about here and we've got our bookmark. So I'm gonna go just a little bit after where the bookmark is. And here is the plus sign for where I'm going to insert overlay. So when I click that, it's going to show me slides in the presentation that I can add as an overlay. In this case, I only have one other slide, so that's my only choice. But if I had more slides, there would be more choices here. Of course, that is the one I wanna use. So I'm going to click on that. I'm gonna hit insert. And then you'll see this little diamond here that appears where the overlay is gonna be. So if I, if I hover on over that, it shows me the slide. And if I go to this, it will allow me to go back to where I chose the overlay. So if I wanted to pick a different one, I could. The other thing I can do here is if I, if I go here, this is going to unlink the current overlay slide. So if I change my mind and I don't want this to be an overlay slide, I can click that to unlink it. But of course, as we know, I do want that to be my overlay slide, so I'm gonna leave that. And let's see what this looks like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip over to the conductor, because I know that's about where my overlay is gonna show up. So let's go there and see what happens. Oh, look at that. And see what it does? So it's pretty cool. It kind of, it pauses the video. It puts my question up and then it kind of gives this blurred uh, background. You know, it kind of makes it blurred background. Now, notice, wow, I can't read this. It's good that I'm previewing this because the answers are not showing up against that uh, blue, that dark blue background there. All right, so I need to fix that. So let me go back here and let's see what I can do here to make these show up. I'm gonna put a square behind it and I'm gonna make the square white. Let's see what it looks like now. Okay, there we go. So now I can actually see the answers. Okay, so now let's see what happens when I answer. Let's say I, I'm not familiar with how the Hogwarts Express works and I pick B. And if I hit submit, ah, it's gonna tell me try again. So now let's get it correct. And I'm trying again, and now I'm gonna hit submit. And this time I got it right, so the video continues. Now something that I noticed just now was that I forgot to put a correct caption. So you saw that when I got it wrong, it told me try again, but it didn't tell me anything when I got it correct, um, which could be fine if that's how you want it. But I realized, wait a minute, I actually want it to tell me correct. So real quick, I'm just gonna go back here to the quiz and see how I can pick the captions. So it does have, it has the incomplete, but I need to, I'd like it to have a correct caption. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that box. And now we have a correct caption as well. So now this time when I get it right, it's going to tell me correct and it's going to tell me to click anywhere or press Y to continue. So now I'll go ahead and click and the video continues. Hopefully you are now ready to create your own interactive video. If you'd like to see some more of my Captivate videos, I will link to them here and in the description. As always, if you found this helpful, I'd appreciate a like, and also be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time.